everybody if you have been following the series you know that in our previous video we explored different patterns of questions asked from the functions chapter but wait there is one super important format we didn't cover yet that's right output based questions they always show up in the exam and can help you score full marks if you know what to expect all right then in today's video we are going to practice some output based questions we will walk through each question trace the code together and i will show you tips and tricks to avoid common mistakes then with that note let's get started we got it here is question number 12 in which we need to find out the output of the following code we know already how to solve this type of question first understand the code properly and draw the dry run table for the same All right then let's try to understand the code in short here is one list with two elements one variable is initialized to 4 this is nothing but the definition of the function let's keep it we will directly come to this function call in the function call we are passing the list to the user defined function so l will become x now using global keyword we are accessing variable g inside the function so the value of g is nothing but 4 In the next statement we are calculating the length of x there are two elements that's why n will be 2 using for loop we are iterating n times the value of i will be 0 and 1 now let's do the dry run for these two passes all right then in the pass one the value of i will be 0 using this statement we are updating the value of x we are taking x of i x of i means x of 0 Look at the list at the 0th index we have 10 we are adding the value of g to the previous value of x of i it means what x of 0 is nothing but 10 we are adding 4 to it it will become 14 let's proceed to the next statement we are incrementing the value of g with 1 it is 4 now it will become 5 In this way pass 1 got over let's proceed to the pass 2 the value of i will be 1 now we need to take x of 1 x of 1 is nothing but 5 in that value we need to add value of g value of g become 5 now so 5 plus 5 will be 10 again the value of g will get incremented it will be 6 this loop will execute for two times and we are done with it now let's proceed to the next statement it is print statement we are printing the value of g look at the value of g it is 6 after that we have one end parameter with dollar symbol so that will also get printed all right let's proceed further we are iterating over l in the previous video we discussed that when we pass mutable data type to user defined function the changes reflect back to main In this program we pass mutable data type to the function that is nothing but list so whatever changes will happen in the function will reflect to main in the function list got updated now the elements of the list are 40 and 10 using for loop now we will iterate over the new list i is taking individual element of the list so first element will be 14 using end parameter we need to print this dollar symbol the second element is chain followed by dollar in this print statement this separator is not useful because we are printing one element at a time in this way we got our final output 6 dollar 14 dollar and 10 dollar all right then let's scroll and check out the options in which option we have this answer it is in the option c that's why c is the correct option hope you understood this explanation In this question 2 we need to find out the output of this code if you can solve it yourself pause the video hope you got the correct choice there is no place to explain that question so let's do it here let's try to understand the code in short there are two calls this is call number 1 and this is call number 2 in the first call we are sending 10 to x using global a we are accessing this global variable inside the function so the value of a will be 2 we are checking this value is divisible by 2 or not if it is divisible by 2 we are updating the value of a with the use of dry run table let's check out the values all right in the first call we are passing 10 to x so the value of x will be 10 a will be 2 because 2 is assigned to a 2 is divisible by 2 that's why this condition evaluates to true if it is evaluates to true let's come to true part A multiply equals to x plus 
this statement is nothing but a into x plus 10. Make a note of it, addition operator is having higher priority than this augmented assignment operators or arithmetic assignment operators. That's why plus will get calculated first. That's why x plus 10 will get evaluated first. The value of x is 10, 10 plus 10 will be 20. The value of a is 2, 2 into 20 will become 40. Pass 1 got over. What we are printing? We are printing the value of this function. It is nothing but 40 followed by end parameter. Hash will get added to 40. So the first output is 40 hash. Let's check out the values in the second pass. 20 is getting sent. That's why the value of x will be 20. Using this expression, we modified the value of a and a is a global variable. That's why value will get updated. Now a is nothing but 40. 40 is divisible by 2. Yes, this condition got evaluates to true. We will come to this true part. Again, this statement will get evaluated. The value of x is 20. 20 plus 10 will be 30 and 40 into 30 will be 1200. In this way, we got the value 1200 for this function call followed by the end parameter is at the rate. It means after that we will get 1200 and then at the rate symbol. We are using end parameter that's why the output will be in the same line. So here is the final output 40 hash 1200 at the rate. Let's come to question paper. The output is in the option A that's why it is the correct choice. Hope you understood this explanation too. Here is question number 12 based on the function. We need to find out the output of this code. It is very easy. Give it a try. One variable c is initialized to 10. Let's come to function call directly. With the function call we will go to the user defined function. Using global variable we are accessing c inside the user defined function. So value will be 10. It is getting incremented by 2. It will be 12. Using print statement, we are printing it. So 12 followed by hash symbol will get printed. Now we will come back to the next statement. The value of C reinitialized to 15. That we are printing. It means 15 will get printed and parameter is percent symbol. Look at the output. This is so simple. We are getting this output in the option C. So here is the code. Try to understand it carefully and write the values for each call of the function. Control will directly come to this statement. A is initialized to 200. B is initialized to 20. We are calling this function name changer by passing the value. A will get passed to P and B will get passed to Q. So what is the value of P? It is 200. And what is the value of Q? It is 20. 10 will get overwritten by 20 as we are passing value. Now calculate this expression. P is equals to P by Q. P is 200. Q is 20. We got 10.0. Division operator gives result in the form of float. Look at the second expression. P is equals to P modulus Q. What's the new value of P? It is 10.0. 10.0 modulus 20. The remainder will be 10.0. With the return statement, we are returning back the value of p. So we need not bother about q much. So the value of p is getting written. Let me erase this. We return the value of p that got stored in the variable a. Now look at the next print statement. We are printing a. So 10.0 will get printed. After that, we are printing the value of b. Look at the value of b here. It is 20. So 20 is getting printed. That's all right. And the separator is dollar. So dollar is getting printed in between them. We need to print the output of this code. So the output of the first print statement will be like this. Let's proceed to the next statement. We are calling changer function once again by passing only one parameter. So that parameter will get initialized to b. As we are not passing both the parameters, default value will be considered. Now let's evaluate these expression with the new values. p is 20 and q is 10. 
So when P will get evaluated, 20 by 10 will be 2.0. No need to bother about Q. That we are returning with the return statement. So come back to the main program. 2.0 will get initialized as the value of B. Again using print statement, we are printing the value of A and B. So what is the new value of A and B? A is initialized to 10 we know. So that got printed. After that we are printing B. What is the new value of B? It is 2.0. So that is also present here. That we could see here. Now the separator is dollar symbol. It is getting printed. There is a end parameter too. With end parameter we need to print these three hash symbols at the end. Accordingly here is the output of the second print statement. This was first one. This is the second one. Finally we got this output. It was quite interesting. Hope you understood this explanation. So we got one more question that is 31st. In this also we need to predict the output of the following code. You know how to solve these type of questions using dry run table. So pause the video and give it a try. If you got correct answer, very good. If not also no problem. Let's practice it together. Alright then here is the dry run table. It's very easy. In this code we are passing one list to the function. So d will be txt. One variable cnt is initialized to 3, total is initialized to 0. Look at the for loop, c is iterating over list, so c will take these individual values. Then look at the individual pass, in the pass 1 the first value of c will be 7. Come inside the loop, let's work out on these statements. t is equals to d of cnt. Initially cnt is nothing but 3, d of cnt means we are accessing the element which is at the index 3 of this list. Look at the list. The index 3 means we will get the element 40. You can notice it's a string value. That's why using float function we convert it to float and adding c to it. What's the value of c? c is nothing but 7 and the element is nothing but 40. So 40 plus 7. String variable got converted to float. So 40.0 will get added to 7 it will be nothing but 47.0 we got the value of total we are printing it so the first output will be 47.0 in this way we will proceed to the next pass there is one more statement we are decrementing the value of cnt by 1 all right then let's check out the values in the next pass in the pass 2 c will take the next element of this list it is nothing but 5 CNT got incremented by 1 that's why the value of CNT is 2. Now D of CNT means we will take the element which is at the index 2 which is nothing but 30. 30 got converted to float and get added to C. So 30 plus 5 will be 35. That's why the second output will be 35.0. Look at the values in the remaining pass. In the pass 3 the value of C will be 4. CNT is getting decremented by 1 so it will become 1. D of CNT means value which is at the index 1. It is nothing but 50. 50 will get added with C so we will get 54.0. So it is the next output. In the pass 4 C is the next value from the list. It is nothing but 6. CNT got decremented now it will be 0. It means we are taking the 0th element which is 20. 20 will get added with C. Ultimately we got 26.0 that is the next output. In this way we got the output for this code. Hope you understood this explanation. Let's wrap today's video. In case of any doubt drop a comment. If you find this video helpful give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. In the next video we are going to move on to exception handling. Remember the more you practice the more confident you become. So until next time stay focused and stay practicing. I will see you in the next video.